Siti Lashakira binti Muhammad Nazri. Today, I would like to present Chapter 1 about Introduction to Financial Management. So, what is a financial management? Financial management is the managerial activities which is concerned with the planning and controlling of the firm financial resources. What is a goal of a firm? The goal of a firm is to maximize the shareholder wealth to a maximizing the price of the firm common stock. Finance have three main areas, which are managerial financial, financial market, and the last is investment. Function of a financial manager. Firstly, performing financial analysis. Financial manager must be able to transform financial data into a form that can be used to monitor the firm financial condition. Secondly, financial forecasting and planning. Financial manager must be able to estimate the future financing it needs to support the increase in production capacity. Third, financing decision. Financial manager must do it in a deep analysis of all the av available fi financing needs to support the increase in production capacity. Moreover, making investment decision. Financial manager must determine the amount and composition of current and fixed asset needs to be held in the firm to run its business activities. The decision must regarding the optimal level of each type of current asset and when the existing fixed asset need to be modified or replaced. And the last is asset management decision. Financial manager must manage the firm asset effectively to ensure that the firm get more benefit out of this asset. Financial market, a marketplace, the place that people can buy and sell financial assets such as bond, equity and derivative. Financial market can be divided into a two which are money market and capital market. Money market is a financial market to raise short term financing in which short term instruments with high liquidity are being traded. Capital market is a financial market for buying and selling a long-term debt and equity securities. This can be divided into a two, which are primary and secondary market. Primary market is deal with a new issue of security that involve the issuer and the investor. The security also considered new as it is the first time issued to the public and named as the initial public offering. Secondary market, after the security has been issued, in the primary market, the investor might decide to sell the share that he or she had bought early. The investor may now approach his stock broker and request the disposal. The stock broker will sell the securities to other who are interested in the secondary market. There are two advantages of financial institution to the financial market. The first is reducing the time and cost of transferring funds. Financial institution help to transfer capital from surplus unit to deficit unit, hence saving time and cost of transferring capital from one unit to another. Secondly, is reducing the risk faced by investor and saver. The existence of financial institution will help to maximize any possible risk arises during the transaction as it occurs through specialized financial institutions that serve as intermediaries between the unit involved. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Siti Nasha Zani Bin Bisaidin. Okay, now I will continue with chapter 4 which title Risk and Return. What is Risk and Return? Risk is the potential of unexpected event to occur. Meanwhile, return is the rewards we expect to get from investments. The relations between risk and return is the higher risk, higher returns, lower risk, lower returns. Okay, next, there are two types of risk. First is systematic risk, second is unsystematic risk. Systematic risk refers to a risk that specific to a particular security and can be eliminated through diversification. For example, the unexpected test of company presidents. For unsystematic risk, it's referred to risk that caused by event that affect the stock market as whole and it can be eliminated by diversification. For example, war, recessions and radical change in monetary policy. Okay, there are three methods to reduce risk. First, we can take insurance policy to protect against risk. Second, we can reduce the volatility of sale and fixed costs. Lastly, we can diversify the asset portfolio. 
And lastly, there are two tools to measure risk. First is standard deviations, and second is coefficients of variations. Assalamualaikum and hi, my name is Aisha Bintang Azhari. So my turn is to explain about chapter 5 which is about cost of capital. So there are three types of source of long term financing which is number 1 is debt or bond, number 2 preferred stock and number 3 is common equity equal to common stock plus retained earning. Other than that, I will explain about way average cost of capital, WACC and way marginal cost of capital WMCC. So WACC is a method used to find the overall cost of financing through the combination of at least two sources of financing and proportionate weight is assigned to each source of financing. While WMCC is a method to, use to find the cost of capital when an additional amount of capital is raised. Lender may increase the cost of debt when the debt amount exceed certain limit okay so this is a WACC formula which is E is market value of equity V is total market value of equity and debt KE cost of equity D market value of debt KD cost of debt tax rate is corporate tax rate so this is example of WMCC where is cost of capital higher as more capital is raised so this is the reason why they are higher as more capital is raised. So the first one is earlier rounds may be seen in debt, which is lower cost, and convenience may prohibit issuance of more senior debt. Second one is subsequent rounds may be less senior debt, which is higher cost. The second one is shares are diluted every time new shares are issued, which is subsequent rounds may be issued at discount, which is higher cost of equity. So that's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum to Sir Shahiru. My name is Nur Adhika Anwar. So I would like to explain Chapter 6 which is Operating Leverage and Break-Even Analysis. I will explain the definition of fixed operating costs, variable operating costs and operating leverage. The first one is fixed operating costs. Fixed operating costs does not vary proportionately with the levels of sales. It remains uh, relatively constant regardless of the increase in the sales volume um, example like rent insurance and property tax um, the next one is variable operating costs it moves directly the level of output the cost increase as output increase example selling commission cost of raw material and direct level cost and the third one is operating leverage it is the re uh, responsiveness of earnings before interest and tax to the change of sale volume due to the use of uh, fixed cost by the firm Next is definition of degree of operating leverage and break-even analysis. Degree of operating leverage is the percentage change in EBIT resulting from a percentage change in sales. And break-even analysis is method used to determine the level of sales that a firm must reach to cover its operating costs. Break-even happens when operating income is equal to zero, which implies that sales revenue are equal to cost. Next, I will explain how to calculate degree of operating leverage. 
Based on the equation, Kokoro contraction expect its sale to increase by 15% next year. If this year's sales are 1 million ringgit and their operating leverage is 1.56, what is the expected level of operating income for next year if this year operating income is 412,000 ringgit? So this equation, we use DOL equal to change in EBIT divided by change in sales. So the operating leverage is 1.56 equal to change in EBIT divided by 15%. So we get 23.4% equal change in EBIT. So this year, EBIT is 412,000 ringgit and EBIT will increase 23.4% next year. So next year, EBIT will be 508,408 ringgit Malaysia because of 412,000 ringgit divided by 1.3234. Next, how to calculate break-even analysis. So based on the question, we have to find the break-even point in unit and sales and the operating profit or loss associated with the production and sales 2000 ringgit. So this one, we have to use the, the formula BEP sales equal PC times P minus V. So 140,000 ringgit times 150 ringgit minus 55 ringgit. So we get 1,474 pair of shoes. And the next one is BEP units equal BEP sales times selling price so we get 1474 times 150 ringgit and we get 2021000 ringgit so the next one is the break even point in unit and sales so this one formula we use ebit equal q times p minus v minus fc so we get 2000 times 150 minus 55 ringgit minus 140000 and we get 50,000 ringgit. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Siti Nur Izzati bin Tayyadani. As for my part, I'm going to present about chapter 7 which is Financial Leverage and Capital Structure. What is leverage? Leverage is magnifying effect of using fixed cost on the returns to the shareholders. Types of leverage. There are three types of leverage which is operating leverage, financial leverage and total leverage. As for the operating leverage, the relationship between sales and earnings before interest and tax. Fixed costs have to be regardless of the level of the firm's sale. The next is measured by the degree of operating leverage. As for the financial leverage, they are the relationship between earnings before interest and tax and earnings per share. Interest on debt and dividend on preferred stock are fixed financial costs. Also, they are measured by the degree of financial leverage. And last, total leverage, which is described the combined effect of operating and financial leverage, measured by the degree of total leverage or degree of combined leverage. Next is point of indifference. It is the level of earning before interest and tax that generates the same earning per share for combination of two or more methods of financing. Calculation for the chapter 7 which is steps to find the point of indifference. This is the example question of how to find the answer. There are seven steps. First step is construct table for existing capital structure. For the second step is determine the amount to be raised. Step three is construct the table for each plan. As for the step 4, calculate the yearning per share for each plan. Step 5, calculate the point of indifference for yearning before interest and tax. Step 6, calculate the point of indifference for yearning per share. And for the last step is draw chart.